So when you're ready to host your event, your teleseminar, the first thing you're going to want to do is upload your slide deck, and that is if you're showing slides. So what you're going to want to do is go to My Slides, upload a new presentation, give your presentation a name, and then you have to upload your PDF file. So most of us who use PowerPoint for creating our slides, we're going to have to convert them to a PDF. So I have PowerPoint 2010, so I'm going to go to File, uh, Save and Send, and then Create a PDF, Create a PDF Document, and then it'll just create that file for me. And then I'm going to go back, and then I'm going to upload that file. Now once they're uploaded, if you go back to you know the My Slides page, you'll see that your presentation is here. So you know if you had several they'd be listed and if it were highlighted it would show how many slides are in the deck here. So when it's time to get ready to start your event, you're going to go back up to My Events, you're going to select the control panel, and then you are going to call in as the organizer the best thing to do is to select your conference mode, so more than likely it's in lecture mode, so all guests are muted when they arrive. And what you want to do is immediately just hold all guests, so that as people come in, they're on hold automatically and they can't hear you speaking. So if there are two of you on the call that are organizers, say you and maybe you have a support person, both of you are going to call in using the organizer call-in number and you're going to press hold all guests immediately. So you two can speak and nobody else is going to hear you. So the next thing you're going to do is get your slide deck ready. And that another important thing to remember is only one of you. So if you're presenting and you have, you know, your VA or someone acting as support, only one of you can access this the slides here and have control over them. So if, it, if you are the one having the control over the slides, then you're going to be the one to do this. Because if the other person does it, they will end up taking over control of the slides and you don't want that. So it's best that you just make that decision up front. So you're going to select your slides and then they're going to launch. And during your call, you're going to advance your slides as you speak, like that. So another thing uh, to make note about is the question and answers. Now those who are attending via webcast, so they are attending on their mic and speakers on their, on their uh, computer, they will be able to submit questions in this box, right? So those questions are going to come here, come into here, and you would select incoming and approved. So obviously there's no questions coming in, but what you want to do is periodically throughout your event is to click this refresh button. So every time you do that, if new questions come in, you need to click refresh in order to see them. So this might be something that your support person might do. That's, you know, when it comes to organizing the facilitation of your event, these are the kinds of things that you need to iron out with your support person. For the recordings, you will want to start the recording, and it even makes a note here, the recording controls will appear here 15 minutes before the official start time. By default, Instant Teleseminar does record your events for you, but it's a good practice to record them yourself because what you want to do is create as clean of a recording as possible. So just before your event is ready to start, so if you're starting at 8 p.m. and you're ready to you know, start your presentation, what you would do is just kind of give yourself a couple of seconds, come over here, press record, and then you're going to go over your slides, and then you're going to start your presentation. So that will give you just a clean video and audio file to use in the end as opposed to if you just use the instant teleseminar recording, it would have all of the conversation that you and your support person had or whatever preparations you did before the conference started because it will start to record as soon as the organizer calls into the number. So another thing during your conference, you will more than likely be on the slides if you're showing slides and maybe your support person is on the who's on the phone. You know, it really kind of depends on how you have it set up, but you know, obviously there are no callers on the line right now, but if there were, you would see them all listed here and whether or not they had their hand raised, if their line was muted, that kind of thing. If their line was muted or if you want 
want to unmute their line, you can just click the mute button beside their name. It would unmute their line. So if there's a question and answer period, obviously, you know, guests are going to have to press star two to raise their hand. You would see the hand icon beside their name, and then you could just click the mute button beside their name to unmute their line and, you know, let them ask their question.